Hello, my name is Aaron, and welcome to Board Games, Bricks, and Hobbies. Today, we are taking a look at seven small games that make great gifts. Let's get started. So, uh, whether or not you are celebrating a holiday at the time of this recording, or you are just looking for some small games that make good gifts, you've come to the right place. Uh, we are going to be taking a look at seven small games uh, that are, make good gifts. They fit in something like this, so stocking stuffers, if you will. Um, without further ado, let's look at the first one here, which you might have seen. It is Coup. Uh, so this is a fun game. It's set in the Resistance universe, uh, so you might recognize some of the uh, stylistic choices there. Um, and it is... A bluffing game. So think poker. Uh, you have two cards. Everyone has two cards, and they are your influence, and they tell you what actions you can take. But you don't have to take those actions. You can choose to take whatever actions you want. That's why it's a bluffing game. Um, of course, someone can always call you out on that, and then you can lose influence, and the last player remaining is the winner. Uh, it's a really fun game um, for two to six players. And if you like games like Liar's Dice, then this one would be one that you would enjoy. So there's that. Uh, let's see what is next here. We have Welcome to the Dungeon. Uh, this is a fun game uh, for two to four players. Uh, essentially, everyone is working on a dungeon, and you can either choose to put a monster in it or to take that monster out at the sacrifice of removing some equipment. Uh, and then eventually one player will have to go through that dungeon that everyone uh, contributed to. And so it's got a little bit of push your luck uh, because you want to be able to go through the dungeon and score points, but you also don't want to go through the dungeon if you know you're, if you think you're going to die. Uh, so it's a bit, little bit of push your luck. It's got a fun theme and fun art to it. Uh, that's a really fun game. Uh, welcome to the dungeon. Let's look at what's next here. We have stuck in here. This is a game of things. So this is for four or more players. Uh, so theoretically, it scales infinitely. Obviously, there's logistical reasons why you probably can't go very high. Uh, but game of things is a fun game where you get a prompt and then you write in the answer. So if you've ever played a game like Apples to Apples, uh, where someone plays a card and then someone else plays a matching card, it's similar to that, except this is open-ended. And that's what, for me, makes this a better, essentially, version of an Apples to Apples style game, uh, which is because it is open-ended, uh, there's just a lot more possibilities for humor and inside jokes and things like that. Um, and also, the way you score points in this game is different than those games. The judge isn't just picking the best card or the, what they thought was the funniest. In this game, uh, the judge or whoever's turn it is, you are trying to give the answers back to the player that you think wrote them. Uh, and so that's a fun little twist uh, because you are trying to say you're, you're holding the um, essentially the responses and trying to give them back to the players. Uh, and you get points for how many you guess correctly. Uh, so that is a fun game, uh, more of a party style game, uh, and it supports a lot of players, uh, and it's accessible to um, all ages. Uh, that's a game of things, not to be confused with a game of thrones. That's a different game. Next up we have uh, Sushi Go. Uh, so this is a, another game with a really cute theme. Uh, it is a drafting game. What that means is that uh, you're going to be passing cards around the table and choosing one to keep and then passing the rest on. Uh, and then at the end of each round, you score points essentially based on the different sets that you collected. Uh, different cards are worth different points. Uh, and this is a fun game um, and it's a good introduction to the drafting mechanic, uh, but still accessible to uh, people who maybe haven't used that before in a game. A uh, really fun game for two to five players. That is Sushi Go. Let's see what is next here. Looks like another card game. 
Uh, it is Monopoly Deal. Yes, there is a Monopoly game on this list, uh, but this is a good one. Uh, if you haven't played it, it's not anything super strategic. I'm not pretending that it is, but it plays in under 15 minutes uh, with two to five players. Uh, you get that same uh, feeling that people think that they get when they play Monopoly, uh, but in a 15 minute card game, uh, it's quick, it's take that, uh, and has a bit of luck in there, uh, but I think that makes it approachable for all ages. Uh, someone with a super keen sense of strategy isn't going to be able to just wipe the table every time. Uh, so definitely makes it better for people of different skill levels. Uh, so good little card game, as you can see. Mine is well-worn and well-loved. Uh, and as far as mainstream games go, uh, this is probably one of the best. Which, again, might not be saying much, but I'd rather play that than Uno any day. Next up, we have Spot It. Uh, I don't have the normal version on hand for whatever reason, uh, but this is just the holiday version. Uh, and Spot It is a fun, quick matching game. Uh, so essentially you are flipping cards over and trying to find matching pictures. There's always exactly one match between every set of cards and you're, you get points by either getting rid of all your cards or by taking the most cards. Uh, there are several different ways to play the game and it is for two to six players. Uh, really fun, quick uh, game uh, for those that uh, like that. Especially good for kids as well. And we have one game left in here. Any guesses as to what it is? It is Love Letter. Well, more correctly, Loot Letter, uh, which is based off of Love Letter. Anyway, uh, this is a small, um, card game that also involves some bluffing and some card play. Uh, essentially, you are trying to end up with the biggest number at the end, uh, but there are different cards that have different powers that allow you to kind of manipulate that and make take other people out of the round. Uh, it is a fun, clever little game for two to four players. And uh, I mentioned Love Letter. Uh, so this game is based off of Love Letter. There are several different versions of this game now. Uh, so that's another cool thing about this game is that uh, you might be able to find a theme that fits uh, the person. So whether it be Cthulhu or Hobbit or Batman, uh, check to see if they've made a love letter, letter version because chances are they might have. Uh, so you can buy the version that appeals most uh, to the person that you are giving it to. Uh, so that's a fun little game uh, that's loot letter or love letter. And that wraps up today's list. Um, is there anything that I left out uh, or any games that you would suggest? Uh, leave them in the comments. I, I do read all of them. Uh, and thank you so much for watching the video. I hope to see you again in another one. Again, my name is Aaron from Board Games, Bricks, and Hobbies. Take care. Bye.